Yeah, so then, hello everyone, good afternoon. And today we want to share our learnings from upgrading an outdated Yocto-based system. First of all, today's agenda. Um, yeah, first point, we want to introduce ourselves. Um, then we will introduce the initial situation we had in our project. Then the general approach will be shown how we want to go through the upgrading process. Then um, we want to show up what was right and wrong before the upgrade. After that, we will go uh, into more detail into several issues we had during this upgrading process. And in the end, we will summarize um, some learnings uh, we had during this upgrading. So now as a first point, let me introduce myself. I am Simone Weiss. I'm working as a software um, developer for embedded systems, uh, embedded Linux to be specific, in the automotive industry. Originally, I studied computer science back, yeah, well, only four years back. Um, but uh, since then, I worked mostly in Yocto-based embedded Linux distributions um, and also took care about cybersecurity topics there with respect to the automotive industry. Privately, I like my cats and nature, and it's the first time I'm giving a talk at such a conference, so please forgive any nervousness and adults to that, but I'm very excited to be here, so thank you also for being here today. Michael, please. Yeah, so my name is Michael Estner. Um, I'm a senior software engineer at Electrobit. My background is electrical engineering, and um, my day-to-day -day work is about embedded Linux and Python. And in my spare time, I practice MMA. I love hiking and cooking. And it's also my first uh, time speaking, so also a bit nervous. So uh, then a few words to Electrobit itself. Um, Electrobit um, is an automotive company with 35 years experience in this field. Um, nowadays, we have 10 years um, open source experience. We are building embedded Linux uh, systems um, with Yocto. And um, now, nowadays also um, we build AB Corpus Linux. So AB Corpus Linux is the Electrobit Linux distribution. Um, there's nowadays also a version built up on Ubuntu. So the first question one could, I could ironically ask, and maybe management will ask is that, so why do you need to even upgrade Yocto? And I want to make it short so that your system does not look like this. You see here um, a little bit of rundown Yocti that I got at the last um, Embedded Open Source Summit in Prague. And we don't want to look our system like this. We have still like our older Yocti, but we also like the newer Yocto versions more. So you should upgrade it so that it doesn't look rather run a little bit rundown anymore. So that's a very... That's the fun part of the motivation and now our initial situation just like by Michael. Yeah, so as you can see, um, we were talking today about the HPC platform you can see on the screen in the red circle. But um, what gets all into this um, platform um, so that you also know the, the, um, what we are talking about. So first of all, we have some external um, components um, like Pokey, Open Embedded and the ARM Trusted Framework. Then we have the Electrobit products that are come into the platform, like firmware, hypervisor, the Corbus Linux image, and in the automotive industry, quite common, Adaptive Autosar. That comes all together in this HPC platform. So again, for firmware, hypervisor, Linux, Autosar. And then we have there also um, stuff like Opti, then some EB-owned applications that are running on the, on the platform, and also Phoebe. And the goal of this platform is to, de to deliver it to the customer. The customer can put on um, his applications uh, on it and um, have a running uh, HPC platform. So we are building the Linux um, with the Yocto project. And the problem we are facing was that the kernel, was, uh, kernel maintenance was about to end. And also other components of the system were not maintained any longer. In the automotive industry, it's quite common that systems um, need, need to be maintained 15 years or more. And we are only a small team uh, of developers and it's not uh, feasible for us to maintain all of this by ourselves. So we won't be able to provide fixes for stuff like CVEs or 
integrating new functionality. Also, the year 2038 um, problem um, uh, patch is not uh, yet applied to all components. So our, our conclusion is upgrading uh, Yocto to a newer version that is still maintained. So now that Michael told you a little bit about the um, initial situation, I want to hi give a brief overview about the general approach we took in upgrading the uh, Yocto system. So the first question we asked ourselves, which version do we want to upgrade to? Um, well, one could say that's easy, just use newest one. But you could also say, OK, we want to use the LTS. So for example, let's use Kirkstone, because that's a current LTS. Or you um, can say, well, um, I have maybe another project running with a um, Yocto version that's maybe half a year old, but maybe I could have some synergies there. So that's all things that you should consider. But also that um, is the kernel maybe in this um, Yocto version an LTS kernel, because for that, that for us was a very important point. Um, then you might have other upstream layers besides Pokey and Meta Open Embedded that are relevant in your software. And you need to check, OK, are those layers available in this kind of version? Um, can I upgrade them myself to this version? Is it all fitting together? So those are all the considerations that went into our decision. And, and I cannot give you a general recommendation there, because what I want to highlight here is it depends on your specific use case. And it depends on your specific requirements, on your specific situation. But those are in brief, the points that we considered and we were at the end quite happy with our decision. So once the decision is made, um, our next step was to upgrade our build environment. So we are building our system with a container. And um, what we basically did, we just um, checked the Yocto development manual and um, checked, OK, are there any new packages required for building this Yocto version? We put them all into our container and this um, pretty much flew from the beginning, so no major issues there. That was easy. Then what we did next was we read through all the migration nodes that are um, available in the Yocto development manual um, uh, for the versions we are upgrading over. So um, not only the one that we are upgrading to, but also all those that we are skipping with this upgrade. And we are trying to get the gist of it to understand, OK, what has now changed? Where do we need to adapt? And this was as a step we took for preparation. So um, those are the main parts we took before we upgraded as a preparation. <coughs> so now let me come to the upgrade process as such. Um, we have um, some constraints here. So we have two machines. Um, on the one side, we have Quemo. On the other side, we have a hardware sock. And um, for those two machines, we have multiple distributions. I will tell more about those distributions on the, um, later. Um, but for each machine and distribution combination, we processed the layers as per their priority and um, upgraded one layer after the other. So first, we fixed the syntax of the layer. So there might um, be some changes uh, in the new version of the syntax. So we need to fix that. Then we applied the knowledge that we gained through reading through the migration nodes. Then we checked, OK, have we overwritten any configuration from Pokey or Meta Open Embedded in our layers, is this still valid? Do we still want that? Um, is it still implementing the same thing? Uh, then we really needed to review um, every override um, <coughs> of configuration we did there from the Pokey system. And um, only in few cases we needed to adapt and say, OK, this is, I don't know, this variable is not called this way anymore, whatever. Um, you need to um, basically rename it or, whatever, or something like that. Then we needed to check the patches. So we have, for example, CVE patches. And OK, when we're upgrading, then we have different CVEs. So some might still apply, some might not apply. So um, sort this out as per open source package. Then you have also maybe some um, project-specific um, functionality implemented uh, where you tweak an open source component to fit your requirements better. So those patches you might need to rebase or to um, check if they are still feasible with this open source package. I will, tell, uh, I will give a concrete example about this later. And uh, once you've worked through those four steps, you are basically ready for a first build. And then you will have some build issues. For sure you will have them. Um, <coughs> and then you fix the build issues, build again. And then, after some iterations of that, you will be able to um, complete a build. 
and then you start testing that. And there we always had um, certain goals in mind that we expect from a layer. So for example, um, with this layer, I expect QEMO to at least start. Or with this layer, I expect QEMO to bring up additionally two containers that implement this and that. And that we did in a lot of smoke testing um, fashion. And once we were satisfied with this, um, we uh, added the next layer and started the circle again. Yeah, so then um, what was right and wrong before we started the upgrade? So on the technical side, uh, why we need to upgrade, uh, the understanding was totally given, but um, summarizing all this upgrading effort into um, summaries for management so that also there a complete understanding is given is very hard. On the other side, um, yeah. Then on the right side, uh, we have no modifications in the Pokey layer and in Pokey or any other upstream layer as uh, recommend, recommended. But on the other hand, we have overrides and backported classes um, and also own recipes for components. What is good that we only uh, that we have created more than one layer, uh, but most of the layers have the same priority. We have um, on recipes created um, with quite good quality and also with respect to upstream, but there are also recipes that are quite out, that are outdated and um, not with respect to upstream created. We use for sure uh, version control, but the, the commit history is really unclean. So this makes it really hard to track down stuff. The last good point is that we use the inheritance mechanism, um, but then on the on the wrong side we have uh, quite a few more points to go. So the style recommendations are not followed uh, everywhere. We have circular dependencies between different layers, and we do not use a recent pokey. So um, now that we gave the overview about our initial situation and our general approach, we want to point five concrete issues to you. And the first one is called machines and distributions. You see there on this table, our machines, the hardware and the QEMU, and also our distributions. And as you see, we have way more distribution than machines. Um, to give you a rough overview, we have our normal distribution. We have two flavors of installer for this distribution. <laughs> We have a debug distribution, again, two flavors of installers for this debug distribution. Uh, then we have um, many distributions for testing. So we have um, one that is including the syscaller where we pass our kernel, an installer for this distribution. We have unit and hardware tests and robot test distributions. And again, the robot installers for the robot test distribution. And then we have um, a production distribution that is, uh, in the end, the one that gets deployed to, in our case, a car. And then you see the dot, dot, dots. And I want to point out there were many distributions. <laughs> and this was already our issue. So we had too many distributions. And upgrading all of this is just a huge effort, like coding, building, testing. And you do not want to spend the time on something that is not necessary. So our first recommendation is to review your machines and distributions carefully before you upgrade. First of all, you should avoid unnecessary machine and distribution combinations. So for example, in our case, we had a hardware installer for the syscaller, but we only fuss on QEMU. So this is a distribution that is just not needed. We can scratch it, go, delete it. Uh, um, nobody wants that code that's not usable. Um, might be different in your case, but delete any code that you don't need before you upgrade it. Second of all, if you have a combination where you do not know the reason for, well, there is most likely none. Um, we had a combination for our debug distribution with our second flavor of installer that was not um, feasible because our um, second version of installer can only accept so and so large images, but our debug distribution was anyway much bigger, so there was no real use case and it could be deleted as well. And third of all, um, 
and this might be uh, applicant to more people than the other two issues which were very specific to us check if distributions can be merged with each other so i said before that we had a distribution for the robot tester um, but this only differed from the normal distribution we had by uh, adding an extra container that contained tools and programs that we want to utilize for robot testing so we could just say okay we don't need the specific distribution at all let's just um, use the normal distribution and deploy the container for example via SSH so remove the distribution save the build time and ease up your maintenance by removing um, code that is either dead or duplicating um, close enough for functionality that you have already implemented yeah so then the second issue we had uh, too many layers so as I told you before uh, we have created more than one layer what is good but if you create too much layers it's not good so here you can see all our layers <coughs> in the project and how they append on each other and yeah um, the layer dependency increases incredible when you have so, so much layers and also you see on the right side the picture we have there on layer which contains um, several applications we have in our um, in our um, image and there you can see the application layer uh, four layers append on the application layer and the application layer also append on four other layers and with this the general upgrading approach Simone told, told you is, is very hard to follow because you do not know how to go then to the next layer and yeah this makes it very hard because you have to look in multiple layers um, how to how to go uh, for, forward to the upgrading process the next point um, with the layers was that um, the priorities are not consistent so as I told you bef before um, we have a lot of layers that share the same priorities and when you have this um, case you might not know from which uh, from which uh, layer which recipe comes in the end in your in your in your image so choose your priorities um, carefully and this is um, the, the third um, part is an um, issue in our um, project organization I would say so we have um, layers maintained by different teams so we are together in the Linux team so we maintain a lot of layers but we have also other um, departments that are also maintaining um, layers and um, yeah they are not often uh, know the style guidelines or how to how a layer should look like and um, yeah this makes it also very hard So, and this is directly related to our third issue um, here called non-conforming layers, but you could also maybe describe it as unclean layers. Um, so, now I will mention where we upgraded from, maybe this was what interested you. So, our starting point is quite old. So, we started with the Octo version 2.4 and we upgraded to at the latest version that was then given when we started. So, 2.4 is quite old, but the good news is then we still did it at the end. So even there's still hope for very old systems. That's the good news for everyone. So um, we needed to adapt the Yocto syntax with the help of the scripts and review very carefully. Um, you might be tempted to skip this yet, but in our experience, um, I don't know how it is for others, but if you start with 2.4, it's really worthwhile to review this carefully because other people might start from more recent versions and then the scripts might be more applicable. So review this very carefully. And uh, a good news is that the Python 3 uh, adaption from Python 2 was really without any big hassle. So we basically uh, replaced Python 2 with Python 3 and the depends and in the inherits and it worked out of the box. There was really no big hassle there. So that, that was a point that went very smooth. And then last of all, um, we had many build failures that were basically due to the fact that the OEC make generator now defaults to ninja but we still um, utilize unix make files mostly so um, upgrading this variable also fixed many build issues from our side overall many packages were modified in multiple layers 
uh, all those layers have the same priority. And while we are aware that you can use, for example, bit big minus e to get the environment, it was still hard to track down um, which change happens where and why. And maybe there was a change that was not related overall with the, um, with the <coughs> intended functionality of a layer, so you did not expect it there. So this was all the points that we needed to clean up. But I'm this, I think this is something that's really worthwhile in the end and you should spend the effort. And last point, um, yeah, we already had the point that we did not have a coherent style. And for example, I want to give you uh, con into consideration the string source URI, append plus equals. Those are just <laughs> stuff that I found during the upgrade and um, this would have not be needed if we would have used uh, Lintra, for example. I personally like OA Lint ADV and we are now using this and I think it's also worthwhile to integrate a minimum set of feasible rules, for example, in a GitHub hook. Yeah, so then um, we come to backporting. So in the project we have a um, layer that is called meta project BB class overrides. And um, yeah, it's a layer that overrides stuff from, for example, Pokey or also from our product layers. Um, there we had the case that we had, uh, before the upgrade, we had a distri, con distri configuration override. And when we started the upgrade, this override um, does not apply anymore. So we needed to find out, out why. Yeah, and a lot of stuff was outdated. And in the end, we were able to remove this um, distro config class override completely because everything was, was already um, in our product included. Second thing is um, here a bit of a history. So we need a reproducible build for our platform. And there we also had a lot of classes we override um, in this, um, in this uh, project layer. Um, here you can see, for example, the image types BB class from uh, Pokey. And there were also several other classes that are overwritten. Um, but after the upgrade, we were able to remove um, all of them, excluding this image type BB class. So we could reduce the size of code um, drastically. OK. <coughs> then also during this um, upgrading effort, um, we had a lot of uh, workarounds around this uh, in recipes um, that could be removed after the upgrade. So, for example, the busy box um, in the busy box recipe, we were able we had a um, um, three liner where just the dev config gets renamed, and yeah, after the upgrade, the dev config had already the right name, so deleted stuff because um, it makes it less complicated. We have also um, we were also able to remove files and configurations. Um, for example, the readline package um, that has several files added, we do not need um, in this upgraded version. So um, we deleted that stuff completely. And also um, uh, crash kernel is a package um, that we do not need. So we also deleted that. And um, yeah, then for the backporting, um, the uh, Git is very important. Um, I already told at the beginning, uh, we have an unclean um, Git history and the commit messages were not in a very good shape because they do not describe why some change was made. They most of the time describe only uh, what, co what, what was changed in the code or Sometimes they did not say anything. And this makes it very hard if you want to track, track down something, why the stuff has changed and you have to port it to a new version, have to upgrade it. Um, yeah, so there, describe why a change was made because in the future it will save you a lot of time because you know why something happened. <laughs> yes, so let me now come to the last issue I want to present today. Um, it's issue number five and it's uh, handling changes in other open source components. So of course when you upgrade Yocto to a newer version you will add also many open source components in that newer version. And um, we patch most of the, well not most, but many open source components um, again in our project with around 280 patches. And the patches included CVE fixes but also um, 
other project specific um, adaptions for our individual requirements we hadn't given. And while it would be fine to just have the patches, additionally for some components, and let me name now one, Botan, um, they were additionally forked. So we had a fork of Botan where we had then uh, over 1K commits and then again patches on top. And uh, all of this was not developed by us, by the Linux team, but still yet we needed to do the upgrade. And that problem there was then, um, we had basically no idea what's now um, going on. Botan was not even building, it was very unclean. So our recommendation directly out of this is choose one approach, do either fork all the patches, but don't mix both. It will make your life hell. It sounds easy in the retrospective, but you need to prevent <coughs> such things from the very root. And in the end, we cleaned it up. So we uh, removed the fork completely and we now only patch Bhutan because um, after a careful review, it turned out those 1K commits was just many back and forth and not so well structured commits. So it was not such a large code change after all, but to figure this out, this really took time. Decide for one approach and then go with it continuously. Don't do both. That's not a good idea. Um, of course, for the upgraded open source components, we then also needed to check are there um, new CVEs or other security fixes that we might need to integrate. Um, but if you have um, CVE tracking set up from the Yocta project, you should get a nice report and this was then, yeah, work but easy work. Absolutely doable, um, but do your CVE tracking and we check everything there when you upgrade. I want to now give four further concrete examples about changes that were um, in the updated open source components where we had issues with. So um, one concrete example would be LibCap. In the new version um, of LibCap, we certainly saw that there was a system call for PSCTL peer CapSet read to check the um, bounding capability set. Um, so as to figure out what um, maximum of capabilities can be gained by a process. Um, but we used this then in our OCI containers. And um, this was a syscall that was not acceptable for us, but as we know uh, what value we, and we can return there as our system is quite static, we just returned that uh, value in a hard-coded fashion to avoid the syscall and um, patch libcap in that way to avoid the syscall so that we don't need to uh, configure it in our OCI container in the second co configuration. Then we had problems with U-boot, especially uh, into the interworking of the upgrade of bin utils. And um, we had problems with the ELF relocation there, and, uh, but this was fixable with an upstream commit that we found. But most of all, we had made certain assumptions about the memory layout that we will get for the U-boot. And this was causing problems with the search of the device tree in the environment for U-boot. Um, and it took quite some debugging to find out that we in the end just have placed the device tree now differently and we need to upgrade the config environment size that defines where you would will search for this device tree. Um, then another issue we had was GCC. Um, it might not be really an issue, but um, we were using GCC version 7.3 before. And as you might know, in version 10, um, there was a change with respect to headers. So headers that were not supposed to be included in other headers as by the C++ standard were removed in GCC, 7 point, uh, in GCC 10. And um, this caused many build failures in, for custom applications on our side. And um, while it would be easy, you can say, okay, I'll, I'll just customers just upgrade their applications to include the correct headers. Um, you need to consider that we are building a platform here and that one customer delivers it to the next one, to the next one, then to the next one, and you heard maybe before, they all don't talk to each other. And it was um, in the end decided on our side that we will just patch those headers in again because we don't consider it a real risk so that we avoid that every customer application now gets upgraded with this change because there's always a certain risk um, involved there and we wanted to minimize that. So the last concrete example I want to give today is about the Linux kernel. Uh, so uh, Michelle mentioned earlier that we are also using Opti. And um, before I come to Opti, I want to 
uh, come to another point, excuse me. Um, so some major and minor device numbers have changed. Um, this is the upgraded kernel and there we had problems as we are passing those along um, in the OCI manifests of our containers and we basically needed to ensure that this is um, consistent again. It was um, an issue that did not directly, um, was, was not directly obvious um, and needed quite a bit of debugging but the fix in the end was okay, the numbers need to be consistent as per the old version and what we had before, or we need to upgrade the container configuration, whatever is most feasible. And then the last point here, I already started before, was about the interworking with the T driver. So we patched the T driver on our Linux kernel side with a um, authentication mechanism specific for applications uh, that we needed as per our project requirements. <coughs> and um, as our old kernel, I mentioned before we had 2.4, so we had 4.14 before, and the T interface has changed quite a bit since then. And we had um, the problems with uh, the specific adaptions, and it did not apply anymore. And this was the only real case where we needed some conception rework, and uh, rework, and we needed to rework our authentication mechanism there, and. Um, yeah, but this worked out at the end, and the good news there is um, by upgrading the kernel and going over this modification again, um, we realized that, okay, well, we should take a deeper look and see how we are doing the authentication mechanism. And um, now I'm aware more of this part of the code, and I'm considering if we can upstream it in a feasible fashion and want to um, bring it into a shape, yeah, maybe in the next few weeks where I can start some discussions there if it's also a feasible upstream contribution. So that's the good news. If you upgrade your system, you also learn new parts about it and there might be something that you should upstream or that you can reuse somewhere else. So consider that as well in the process. So this sums up my issue five in maybe a hopeful note. Michael, with the complete summary. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, this is already our last slide. So here we have our learnings. Uh, we have some goals we wanted to achieve and also how we can measure them. So um, one important goal was um, that we have a company-wide awareness about this upgrading process because it's a lot of effort to do this. You need a lot of people that work are developing in this upgrading. And uh, yeah, the positive effects are um, notable, noticeable in the company because everyone is happy about the upgrade now. So yeah, goal, goal achieved. Um, then a more technical goal, so um, yeah, think about your machines and distributions. There needs to be a logical number. Um, so as Simone already said, um, delete not needed uh, machines or distributions or merge them if possible. Yeah, then I think also a goal for every project, standardized syntax. Um, yeah. So what we did, we introduced syntax guideline all over the project now and also use a linter to check all of this. And yeah, that works out quite well now. Um, yeah, we also wanted to optimize the layer split because yeah, we had too much layers. Um, we reduced the number of layers. Um, we um, assigned um, sensible priorities to the layers so that it's more uh, logical. And um, yeah, we have now the same layer construction all over all departments that are involved in the, in the project. Then about upgrading OSS components. <coughs> um, we could measure that we have now uh, reduced the number of patches because we have a new version and a lot of stuff that we need is already upstream. So there are also the recommendation if you have something that you can upstream, then try to upstream it because you will invest from it in the future and others as well. So yeah, good thing, I, I, I think. Um, then um, handle third party components. So consider the assumptions for integration of the components. Um, yeah, this points out to the stuff Simone told you about um, U-boot and the spin utils issue. Yeah, and then uh, our last goal was up-to-date software. I think everyone can agree. <laughs> and yeah, how we want to measure it. So if we upgrade more often, then we have up-to-date software. And um, yeah, with this, I want to end our presentation. So thanks for your attention. 
And if you have any additional questions, then please feel free to ask, or else you see our contact information. And um, if you have later any questions, then please feel also free. Thank you. Yes, uh, Bob, thanks also from my side. Um, I wish you all a pleasant evening. Of course, we are still here for answering questions, and see you also later at the booth crawl. Thank you for great presentation. Um, so, in, in this project, um, so it, it, is there any uh, automated testing system? Automated testing system used? Uh, uh, such, such, such as uh, CI/CD. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, so the question is, um, what testing system or uh, what CI/CD we use? So, 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 so could, you, could you repeat? So the question is, what uh, testing system or what CI/CD we use? Ah, y y yes. Yeah, so we uh, have uh, Jenkins running, um, where we have integration tests, and we have also a software test department that uh, also tests uh, all the components in the system, and. Yeah, the tests are running on uh, Kimo and also on hardware. So we have we have an uh, inter integration uh, department. Uh, some folks that are um, have added Raspberry Pis to our target, and um, now you can automatically um, flash the target and then do testing. Ah, thank you very much. Is this answering your question? Is this answering your question? Ah, or yes. yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, and uh, as pointed out before, we also have like unit tests and robot tests, so we are doing different levels of testing. So we are working there as per the Wii model that is quite commonly used in the automotive industry, as you know. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your presentation. It was great. Uh, I have a question about the installer. Uh, you mentioned that you have two different installers for each uh, version. Can you explain what's the difference between them? Yeah, um, it's um, quickly explained. So one installer is responsible for the initial software load when the um, ECU is uh, produced and then put into the car. So there's initial, initial software load, that's one flavor of our installer, and the other one, that's the one that can be used in the workshops. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. Um, uh, you were talking about um, Yocto 2.4, and you updated all the way to the latest one. Um, uh, from here on in, uh, you said you upgrade more often. Uh, do you have a, an idea of how, you, how you're going to deal with the upgrades from here on in? Mm -hmm. um, so you mean how we deal with the upgrade, those like do it, I don't know, ha every half a year or um, yeah. I understand your question, and I could tell you now what I would prefer personally wise, and I could tell you what will, will most likely happen. Um, I think it is now also clear to everyone, customer management and so on, that we need to upgrade. Um, and I would like to upgrade, um, yeah, maybe every half a year, or whatever, uh, but I am not in the power to make this decision. <laughs> Um, so I would say um, we will find hopefully a middle ground like from LTS to LTS. Okay, thank you. And I think that would be feasible. Um, this would now conclude our session, I would say, if there are no further questions. And I would like to thank you all for coming again and um, have a nice rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you.